Hey everybody, welcome back to Whole Growers. I know it's been a week or two since the last video. However, quite a bit has been going on in the last couple of weeks here at Holt Growers. Uh, for starters, Memorial Weekend was last weekend and it was gorgeous all last week. However, today and a couple of other days, it's been pretty rainy. So let's get right to the topic of this uh, video and that is a drip system. So I've installed a drip system in my garden beds behind me right over there. And we're gonna quickly go through uh, the components and uh, cost, uh, benefits, and drawbacks. So um, let's get right to it. So uh, for starters, I am not using a sprinkler system this year, uh, mainly due to my well here and the um, stress it puts on the well. Uh, with the increased production, I don't wanna run my well dry. So. I have talked about this in previous videos and that is a rain collection system. Uh, currently we have 350 gallons of water available for rain collection and I hope to expand that to just over a thousand gallons within the next couple of weeks. Uh, to give you an idea of how much that is, it's a 350 gallons with, will last me about three weeks with no rain. So. Um, the reason for the expansion clearly is a lot of times we'll go the entire month of August with no rain or even um, July with maybe one or two bouts of rain. So I want to collect that water so I can use it for irrigation purposes and not put that stress on my well. So we're going to start there and I'll go over the components. So if you follow me over here, it is nice and sunny out as you can see. This is the rain collection. We did paint it. Two sides are white because that's the paint we had and two sides are black. Uh, the reason we want to paint it is no sunlight, no algae growth. We don't want algae growing in our rain collection system. It will clog up the hose lines and overall not make the water very good. So uh, I will be adding two more of these right next to it in the next couple of weeks and then adding a um, manifold at the bottom to connect them. So they'll all drain off of one roof spigot spout and it will fill all three of them. And then I can use a hose spigot on, to take water from all three of them. Currently I have a Y attachment and I will show you that real quick here. So, Right here, this is a two inch opening uh, with a coupling and then I have PVC cemented together coming down to my hose line. My hose line again is a Y, this one's gonna be left open. I'm gonna put a ring cap on it just so debris and crap doesn't get in it. And this starts my actual irrigation system right here. I have a short hose, it's only 15 feet, uh, sorry, 12 feet long. It is a half inch hose and it's going to run to the rest of the irrigation system right along this path here to here. This black hose is called a soaker hose. Soaker hose is pretty cool. It seeps water out. It doesn't really soak, it more or less just seeps it. Similar to a drip system, uh, but it's not a hard line. It's very flexible and you can bend it and shape it pretty much however you want. There are kits you can get for these, um, these kind of kits that will allow you to add hard corners, but I like the flexibility of the system I have. I currently have 150 linear feet of this hose line in place with three hoses, so 50 foot each. And then it's really easy to put on. If you look behind me here, you can see I'm running right along my bed line rows I have two of them running in where I have two rows of crops and then I only have one. There is beans planted there that haven't sprouted yet. Uh, I did take care of this by bypassing our garlic. So if you've been following us this winter, you know we've planted some garlic, actually quite a bit of it right there. It's gonna be ready to harvest here in about one to two weeks. It's getting really close and I'm very excited about that. However, 
garlic before you harvest it you want it to dry you want the soil to be nice and crumbly and dry and you want those roots to dry out so i did not run my drip system uh, with these soaker hoses through my garlic that way i can uh, irrigate the rest of the crops without getting that garlic irrigated and let that garlic dry out over the next one to two weeks hopefully the weather will cooperate with the rain if not i might end up having to cover them with some type of plastic to keep the rain off so they can dry out but they are going to be harvested very soon now if you look i've got tomatoes intercropped with the tomatoes are some carrots that are just starting to peek out uh, those carrots should be ready to harvest in the middle of July. Radishes, uh, you can see that right here. They're intercropped with peas. I have the peas going down the center and then a row of radishes on both sides. The radishes will be ready to harvest. I will have one set ready to harvest starting in two weeks and then uh, we'll be harvesting radishes pretty much weekly until September, October timeframe, which is very exciting. Uh, the peas and the green beans should be ready to be harvested in July, mid to late July uh, for those. Tomatoes, it's as soon as they start getting ripe, which hopefully will be in the next three to four weeks. Um, let's see, what else do we have in here this time? I have been trying my hand at lettuce for the first time. I'm, um, talked to my parents my mom uh, said we did grow leaf lettuce various varieties when I was a kid but I don't remember ever doing it so um, as far as memory serves me this is the first time I've ever had um, any experience really with uh, lettuce and it's not going very well so <laughs> just to put it nicely uh, you can check out a previous video where I I'm testing out different ways to plant the seeds uh, using plastic trays versus the peat pots and neither one seemed to be working very well. Um, I'll get sprouts in the plastic trays but then they just wilt and, and die. I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, if you have any suggestions or comments please let me know. Leave a comment. I would love to hear from you. See if you have any ideas on what I'm doing wrong on that. I'll probably get a video going um, later this week or next week specifically about the lettuce crop and what's going on with it. Uh, the peat pots, they don't seem to be doing very well either, but I think that's more overwatering because they, the pots themselves soak up that water like a sponge. I haven't been watering them near as often as the plastic, but they stay wet. So uh, I'm not sure what's going on with that. Like I said, if you have any suggestions, uh, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, also, you can see some framework going on. By the end of the week, I have the next three days off of my work, uh, my full-time job outside of the farm. So over the next three days, we're going to be getting the basic framework for the Caterpillar tunnel going over these beds in place, as well as chicken wire all the way around. Um, then next week behind me, there's going to be some fencing going in. So our lovely ladies will be able to free range back here. So stay tuned for that. And uh, as always, get out, grow something today.